Hi guys, Carrie Ann here. In the last video, we took a look at how the internet works, thanks to my friend Matt over at Raspberry Pi for Beginners. So today I thought it might be interesting to see, how does HTML work? What is it? And perhaps we can create our own web pages using it. In this tutorial, we are going to create our own comic strips using HTML markup, and I call mine the Cape Saga. HTML uses a system of tags. These tags look like this, and whatever you write inside the tag determines what you will see on the web browser on your screen. HTML tags require a beginning and an end, and it's the slash that shows that's the end of the tag. And the HTML is written in a tree-like structure. So here is an example of some HTML code. In this example, I've got my opening tag. So first of all, telling the browser this is HTML code and then there's going to be a title. So what you would see on the screen in the title is Hello Geek Girl Diaries. And then there's a slash inside the end tag to encase it. In the actual body of the page, it will say Hello Viewers. And that's just simple tree-like structure of HTML. So if you open up a notepad, a blank notepad on your screen and you type this in, we can then save it as a web page and you can see what it would look like in a web browser. You can see here that I am indenting my code, spacing it out so that I can see clearly where things are going. Because later on, if I've got lots and lots and lots of code, I want to be able to quickly find if there are any errors or if there's something I want to change. It's always good practice to indent your code. Once I've finished typing in all of my code, I'm going to save this, but not as a text file. I'm going to save as, I'm going to write the name of the file and then .html. If I save it like that on my desktop, my computer recognises that it is a web browser file. And if I run it, it'll open my web page and you can see. You can't see all the code, but you can see what I wanted it to display. We can also add extra bits of information to our HTML code, and these are called attributes. Attributes appear inside the opening tag and their value is always inside quotation marks. So here's an example of what it would look like. Attributes can be things like fonts, colours, sizes, anything really. Here's my website, Geek Girl Diaries, and in Google Chrome we can inspect the elements or the code of this website just by right-clicking. And here you can see all the code, all the HTML code that is used for my website. You can see where the attributes are, anything inside a quotation mark. And you can see where I have links to other pages and to images that appear on this site. Now that we've created our own web page and we understand a little bit about what's happening in the background of pages, let's actually have a go at something live where we can change the HTML code and see it updating straight away. I'm a huge fan of web comics and I found a really great site this week that allows you to change the HTML code and make your very own web comic, even if you're not very good at drawing. The address for the website we're going to use is cmx.io. If we go to that, it will take you to this landing page where we can launch an editor with this button. The page is split into two sections. The top half is what would be displayed in the web browser, and the bottom half is the HTML code. Anything I change on either the top half or the bottom half will work. So at the moment, I'm moving the box, I'm tilting it up and down, and it's making changes to the code at the bottom. I can also change what's written inside the box by using the code. I just need to find the tag, the label, and replace one lazy morning with meanwhile at Geek Girl Diaries headquarters. I can press Control and S on the keyboard. I can use the apply button in the, in the bottom right hand corner to make the changes and they will happen live to my web page. I want to move my stick men around as well, so you can click on them in the top half, move all their joints, move their heads backwards and forwards, and you can even move where the text, where the speech bubble is coming from, just using your mouse. If I want to, I could go to the bottom half and I could start changing the code instead. Now you can see what you can do, let's create an entire comic strip. Obviously it helps if you've got a story in mind. One of my friends really thinks that I should wear a cape in my videos. I'm not quite sure I agree with him, but I thought it would make a perfect excuse for a comic strip. So here's my comic strip. I am going to include some of the things he said to me in a speech bubble. So one of the little people is going to be him, and one of the people is going to be me. Quite annoyed I can't put hair on the little person, but maybe I'll figure that out later. 
All I'm doing in this video is I'm just changing the text for the speech bubbles first of all and I'm just going to use my mouse to move people around. In the last scene of my comic strip I'm going to have a hyperlink to my videos on YouTube. So if we look at the last scene where the writing is, I'm just going to replace some of the writing, but on the last line what I'm going to do is instead of just having text I'm going to put the address of my videos which is just the address of my YouTube channel and ta-da there we have it my finished comic strip. This cape issue is not going to go away so I need you to go to the Geek Girl Diaries website and I need you to have a look at the blog because on there is a link for you to vote cape or no cape. If this has interested you, HTML is something that you want to have a bit more of a play with then definitely check out Mozilla Thimble where you can create and some HTML code and you can see it live changing on the screen as well. If you've enjoyed today's video make sure you check out the other videos and please like it, share it and subscribe. You can even leave comments about what kind of content you would like to see. And Don't forget to go over and check out the blog on the Geek Girl Diaries website. My name's Carrie Ann, you've been watching the Geek Girl Diaries and remember I'm just a mouse click away. Bye.